hear me? Yep. Why? Jump is on fucking water with you guys. It's fucking life. Dumbass, please. I hope you fucking break. What'd you throw at me? <sighs> yep. What are you doing? Turn the fucking lights on! You dumbass fucking... Let me see the fucking lights! Shit! Shit! What you saw in the video occurred in August 2023. The timestamp was a little bit off, but the date was correct. Um, I want you to know that I'm not evaluating anybody. I'm just kind of speculating on what could have happened or what could happen in a similar circumstance. But to give you a backstory before we dig into some of the characteristics here, when we ask ourselves what happens when a narcissist or a psychopath becomes violent and how should we respond, the backstory is, I like to walk, you know, about three miles every day. I either walk or jog, just a way to stay in shape, and I enjoy doing it. It kind of clears out my mind, and I used to go out in the uh, state park and I'd walk for three miles, but it occurred to me that, um, well, after my heart stopped while I was out walking, and uh, fortunately somebody found me that there's a danger there, but what's more, it takes or it took me a half hour to drive to the park, a half hour to drive back, back, and in, a, in that space of time, an hour, I could have walked three miles in my neighborhood, not to mention save gas. So a few years ago, I started walking in my neighborhood. Never had a problem, and in the summertime, I would walk at night because it's cooler. And it's, it's um, you know, fairly common for people to pull up beside me and talk to me and sometimes they even compliment on my lights because at nighttime when it's hot in the summer and cool in the evening and fewer bugs, or at least you can't see them if they're there, I wear bicycle lights. I've got a light that I wear on my hat so I can see where I'm going. I've got flashing lights. You saw those in the video uh, I wear on my back and so people can see me so the objective is i can see and i can be seen and i've even had a police officer one time pull up side of me and compliment me on my lights but uh this one evening this is before the video a few days before the video was taken there was a car pulled up behind me and stopped that's unusual so i stood at the side of the road to make sure they had room to get by and instead of driving by the driver drove up alongside of me and uh, it was a young woman and she said i'm going to run you over or i'm going to run you down something akin to that and then she pulled into a driveway at a house uh, and when she got out of the car i asked her you know what did you say and she repeated it i'm going to run you down i'm going to run you over so one more time, she got out of her car, stomped up on the front porch, and I asked her, what did you say? And she said something about not liking my hat and the lights. And then she said, I said, I'm going to run you over or run you down, whatever she said. So I just went on my way. And a few minutes later, I just happened to encounter a patrol car. Actually, it was a pickup truck, but... Uh, a police officer, county police officer, I flagged him down and I told him what happened. You know, there was this woman, young woman, who threatened to run me over. And he gave me his, um, gave me his email address, gave me a business card, email address, text number, and asked me to send him the details, which I did. And in addition to that, 
Well, so I uh, sent a note to the sheriff's office by way of the internet, so they were notified three times. I was thinking there would be some intervention. To my knowledge, that intervention never happened, or if it did, uh, nobody told me about it. But it occurred to me then that, man, I should have had that recorded. So I'm going to get me a um, body cam. Bought one on Amazon. If I remember, I'll put a link in the description of the body cams that I have. And if I encounter this young woman, or anybody for that matter, in the future, I'll have it recorded. So August 28th came along a couple of days later, and I was walking the same place, and uh, late at night, had my lights flashing, but this time I had uh, not only a body cam, but I had my cell phone camera on. So I had two video cameras going at once, just to be safe. And that's when the incident happened. So I made my way home, I called the police, told my wife, called the police, and within literally a minute, almost literally a minute, we had a first responder knocking on the front door. That's because the guy lived a few doors down, so he heard it on the radio or however they communicate. I don't know if he has a police radio or they call people, I don't know, but he heard about it, responded almost immediately, somebody I know. And it wasn't long before we had several police officers and the ambulance was there. And I said, look, I'll have my wife drive me to the hospital. And they said, no, you need to ride in an ambulance because your heart rate is way up. And I've had heart issues in the past. I have a, uh, what do you call those things? Um, a heart pump or something put in. And um, my blood pressure was way up. And, uh, you know, this woman chunked a piece of wood at my head, threw a piece of wood at my head. And I had a black eye, and it was swollen. It wasn't black at that moment, but a couple of days later it turned into a black eye, so I had this big knot on my head. That's important because a few years earlier, I'd fallen off a ladder, and uh, that resulted in a uh, subdural hematoma, or a bleeding of the brain, and uh, that time they threw me on a helicopter and flew me to a hospital uh, in a big city. And they said, there's a good chance this guy's not going to survive the night. It was just that serious. Told my wife that. So, uh, you know, a blow to the head can be deadly. And this is the second time that happened. Fortunately, this time it wasn't that serious. But still, the possibility I could have died that night. This could have been a homicide. It is possible that I would not have been here to talk to you about it. But the end of the story, the police came out, arrested her. You know, police have these little tricks to get people to confess things. And I guess, I don't know what they said to her. But I'm guessing they asked her what she did with my hat. And she told them she threw it away. And when she told them that, she unwittingly admitted to stealing the hat. So they arrested her. Plus, they had the video. And the, the video that I had that I was wearing, the body cam, I left it on. You know, I turned it on when I left my house. And then it occurred to me that it was still on when I got to the hospital. So, you know, I recorded everything. It's about an hour long. So I had it all, uh, had it all documented on video. And when we got to the hospital, then it occurred to me that, uh, you know, the police need to see this. So uh, they took a look at it, and when they saw what you saw, that's when they really got upset. And they went out looking for her. Couldn't find her because apparently, you know, it was obvious where she lived. You know, I got her address. I got her license number. So they went to her house. Mom said, uh, according to the police, Mom said um, something to the effect that she slept through it. She didn't know, whatever. They talked to the neighbors. And the consensus seems to be none of them were surprised, none of them had video, you know, the door cam thing, some of them had, you know, what do you call those things, ring something, but um, they had the cameras, but they didn't pick up the, the recording. 
This is like three in the morning when the cop went out to interview neighbors, you know, banged on the door, got them out of bed. I guess you got to do that because you want to get information as quickly as you can before they erase their videos or forget whatever. So I'm sure they were pleased to have a policeman knock on their door and get them out of bed. But the point is that the consensus among the neighbors seemed to be that nobody was surprised because apparently this young woman has a reputation in the neighborhood for causing problems. But the important thing is we got it recorded. All right, what do we take away from this? Well, we've got seven things. All of these come from uh, the checklist of uh, psychopathy from Robert Hare. Number one is um, a lack of remorse or guilt. We're going to tie these together in just a minute. And by that, I mean a lack of feeling or concern for the loss, pain, and suffering of victims. That is one of the indicators that somebody is a psychopath. They don't care. There's no guilt. Uh, if it hadn't been video recorded, I suppose, I suppose rather, I was going to say suspect and then suppose, and they came out suspose, but uh, I suspect that uh, she would have denied it. That's why I got a video camera. Number two, callous and unemotional. That is a lack of feelings toward other people in general, cold, contemptuous, inconsiderate, and tactless. And then that's according to psychopathicstyle.com, sociopathicstyle.com. And uh, I might add, not only are they callous in their feelings toward others, but uh, they only care for themselves. Number three, early behavior patterns. Well, this young woman was only 19 years old, so it's still early. So that's kind of obvious. Uh, juvenile offending, same thing. If you define a juvenile as somebody who was younger than uh, most people, then it's a juvenile. 19, that's technically not a juvenile, but still close enough. And this was her first... Um, first offense, or we should say the first time she was caught. The outcome was she was charged um, with battery. They don't have assault in my state. They have battery. And she was charged with battery, uh, fifth degree battery. And um, she was, uh, you know, after they arrested her, put her in jail, went through the court proceedings. Uh, she, you know, she almost had to plead guilty because we had it on video, but um, sentenced to four years in prison, but she got a suspended sentence because first offense and she's young, which I wasn't happy with, but you know, that's kind of what I expected, so she's going to have to wear a uh, ankle bracelet for about four years, I don't know the exact term, but it's about four years. And then there's a protective order that she has to stay away from me, and I think a couple other people. I'm not sure about that. So it's what I would call juvenile offending, even though she's technically not a juvenile. Close enough, and she probably have, has done things like this before. This didn't get caught. Number five is impulsivity. Now, it seemed to me that um, this thing had been planned. I mean, it had to be. She said it wasn't, but it had to be because, number one, she's wearing dark clothes. Number two, she's wear, walk, uh, waiting rather in the dark for me to come by. Number three, um, she had this, what was effectively a chunk of wood, you know, a block of wood, but actually it was one of these things you hang on your wall to put mail in, made out of wood. So it had a handle on it, and you could throw it to somebody easily. So you know, she was waiting in the dark, had her weapon ready. Impulsive, she kind of planned this through, but still you can see the impulsivity of her actions. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Number six is poor behavioral controls. That's what we got from the neighbors. Apparently she does, uh, she's an annoyance or a nuisance a lot. Seems to be a behavior pattern. And uh, number seven is criminal versatility. Now, this is important because they put her in jail and she bonded out, probably her parents or family member, maybe grandparents, somebody put up bail for her. 
And within a month, she was arrested again. Uh, the second uh, offense was she was, according to the judge, she was driving 70 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone in town. <laughs> and the police caught her. And she had drug paraphernalia and uh, apparently some kind of drugs or something in her vehicle. And that landed her um, six degree offense um Felony, so now she's got two felonies. Fifth degree when she attacked me, and then sixth degree for speeding and having drug paraphernalia. And they probably could have made mine a fourth degree, which would have been more serious, but I think they wanted to negotiate a little bit with the, uh, with the other attorney, and that was kind of like, okay, we'll make it fifth instead of fourth, and, you know, that'll be a little bit better prison sentence because you're going to be convicted you know so you may as well go ahead and enter a guilty plea which she did so here's a 19 year old girl she has two felonies back to back i mean it was almost exactly if i remember right a month apart from the first offense the attack to the second offense um you know the speeding drug paraphernalia and if they had been able to arrest her on the threat a few days before this incident occurred, which, you know, it's her word against mine, and I'm sure she would deny it. I'm not positive, but I'm fairly sure she would deny it. Uh, that could have been a third felony. So what do you take away from all this? Well, how do we tie all this together? The way that I tie it together is... Um, and you can do what you want with this. You know, my objective with these videos is to, uh, when you're done watching, I want you to learn something you didn't know before. And I want you to feel good about yourself. You know, that's true of virtually every video I make. I want you to feel a lot better about yourself after you get to, after you're done watching the video, when you get to the end of the video. But the takeaway is, buy a video camera. I mean, record yourself. I pretty much record my life. I went to the grocery store early this morning. I usually go about 6 o'clock when it's not busy. I've got a um, cell phone that I put in my pocket. Turn on record. Nobody knows it. Yeah, it's common. Nobody's bothered by it because cell phones are common. But I also bought a, um, as I mentioned earlier, I also bought a uh, body cam. Well, I bought a second one since then because there's a little better, well, a police-style body camera. I bought, and it doubles as a um, dash cam. It's pretty good. Uh, and the odd thing is, it's no more expensive than a dash cam. So you may as well buy it because you can wear it as a body cam and as a dash cam. So that is, uh, that is my takeaway is man record yourself so i've got body cams i've got uh, use my cell phone as a body cam so technically i you could say i got three my house is surrounded by video cameras uh, my cars have dash cams in them so basically i record my life and if nothing happens just delete the videos or you know they delete themselves because they rotate they're on a loop but um Another benefit of having cameras is it keeps you honest because you too are being recorded. The last thing you want to do is to record yourself doing something wrong. So I tend to obey the speed laws because I'm recording myself. And you never know when you might get pulled over and the cop sees the camera and maybe they could seize it. I don't know if they can or not. So those are some of the advantages of um, having cameras. And I'm not telling you what to do. I don't give advice. I give ideas. I tell you what I would do, and you can take it or leave it. But as we tie all these things together, the fact of the matter is we live in a world that is populated like 2% with a psychopaths, narcissists. They're out there. And if you record your life, maybe not literally every second, and I know in some jurisdictions it's actually illegal, to record everything, particularly without the other people knowing it. 
Fortunately, that's not true where I live. Otherwise, this video would have been mute. Um, you know, they would have been, it couldn't have been used as evidence. So it's kind of a dumb law if they have it. But what should have I done? What would you have done? I mean, I could have fought back. Um, you know, I took Taekwondo. I wasn't really good at it, but I learned how to handle people. But, you know, I've got shoulder problems, um, got surgery uh, planned in the near future, so it would have been a little bit difficult. I was carrying, actually carrying a barbell, dumbbell rather, when I was walking so I could do, um, what do you call them, hammer curls as I was walking. Could have smacked her in the head with that if I wanted to. I didn't, could have shot her, didn't want to do that. But had I reacted, responded differently, then I would have had some problems. So I found that by maintaining a flat effect, record it, take it to the police, stay in my lane, let the bad guy make the mistakes, get it on video, and uh, that's your best defense, in my opinion. In fact, they teach you that in Taekwondo, that uh, if you can walk away, walk away. Otherwise, you might get hurt. You know, you don't have anything to prove by fighting somebody. You can take them to uh, call the cops. But you got to have evidence. There's a round dot in the lower right-hand corner, red dot. Click on that. You can become part of our YouTube family. Don't forget to click the bell so you can receive updates. There should be a rectangle or left-hand corner. That's our video library. I have lots of uh, videos from past uh, months. Okay, it's probably been years now. So you can binge if you want, and we'll see you all next time.